You know, people think about. That's all I, I'm doing. I don't really, you know, just talk out of my donkey. I don't want to use that word, you know. Hey, trying to make it a family, family show. But um, so, first and foremost, Leslie, congratulations to you on, you know, your art exhibit. Thank you so much. Woo-hoo! Yeah. Good. Um, I must say that this is definitely a thing, a journey that you, you chose to not go alone on. You drag the rest of us in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. It's, it's, it's cool. I, I like what this whole thing has become. And as I see, I see the art and seeing it from when you started. I remember, you know, you starting it and I was wondering to myself, what is my friend doing? <laughs> because what what are these things like? You know, I'm thinking to my honestly, okay, don't be hurt, okay? I have to start by saying don't be hurt. But you know, the first time I saw it, I thought it was like your nephew or somebody who did that first one, <laughs> you know? And then I, I realized, but then I'm like, nah, I don't think his nephew can be this coordinate, you know? It, it, it was too too organized in a way, you know. So and I, I I just learned to love it and appreciate it. And um yeah, once again, congratulations, congratulations. So as I always say, it's not a celebration without a drink. But since we're not sponsored by this specific um, liquor provider, Correct. I can't put the bottle up here. So we're going to keep it down here. Exactly. That's cool with you? Yeah, of course. All right, good. You sponsor us, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right, so here's what we're going to do, right? We're just, I don't want you to ask me any question. I don't plan to. Cool. Because any question you ask me, I won't answer. But. I just want us to have a really simple conversation. Can we do that? We always do. That's the funny thing. All right. But we're not going to have those type of serious conversation today. It's too much ish happening in the world. Can I curse? Yeah? Okay. It's too much shit happening. Yeah. No? Yeah. I can't. Okay. It's too many things happening in the world today. So we can't have a super duper conversation. But speaking of the world, you know, um, I'm so happy and you know proud of how far the human race has gone this yeah seriously and i know that some of you guys are thinking oh my god he's about to get deep no i'm not i promise you good and bad you know the human race has gone i like a lot of the times when i'm driving around i think of the weirdest things for example by the way, I'm not a comedian, y'all. I, I literally just say what's on my mind. So, <laughs> for example, could you imagine the person who created the toilet? Could you imagine what type of things this person had to go through? No, no, no like seriously, think about it. Think about it. Hold on, don't laugh. Think about it. To get that specific amount of water in there, like how do you? How did he or she? came to the point where they were like, this is enough water. Or when you flush, it's going to go this way, not that way. You know, that's the human mind. To y'all, it might be like, ew. But (laughs) seriously, human beings are some very outstanding people. Because for you to really sit and say, you know what, I'm tired of these people coming to my yard and using, you know, outside. I'm going to create something that is going to allow them to, you know, make themselves okay. Anyway, let's move on from that. <laughs> <laughs> so another, I think it's good, Instagram. How do you feel about that? About Instagram? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting space it's, to be in. Is, is it a good, do you think it's a good... Um, Thing that human beings created a good creation. I, I think Instagram has social media in general has been um, next. No, level. no, no. I'm not talking about social. I'm talking Instagram about specific. Instagram because we know TikTok is dumb. So okay, Instagram. I'm talking about Instagram. All right. 
I okay, I'm gonna say this. Initially, when I got on Instagram, it was something where I could get up every morning and just view beautiful imagery from people and very inspiring imagery. <laughs> and, hold on, hold on, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. When you say beautiful, are you like <laughs> like people will take pictures of their dogs. People will take pictures of Leslie. Highlights. Leslie, you join Instagram to watch people's dogs? No, initially. Initially, initially, you know, Instagram has been around. It wasn't for, for the girls. Don't lie. And we're getting there. We're getting there. And then Instagram invented the Explore tab, and that Explore tab is dangerous. Tell me more. <laughs> I, I don't do. I don't open up the Explore tab in in public because now no one should. In case you didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> your Explore page tells people the type of shit you're looking for on Instagram. Oh, oh what your friends are looking at, thinking that your friends are like you. And 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 now it's it's a very it's a very interesting space. Um, for okay, I look at it from two angles. On the business angle, it's a great place. I to say push. we're not saying we're not we're not doing, we're not doing business. business. We're no, doing personal. no, forget business today. Are we doing personal? I we I just want to know what you Leslie think about Instagram. I I think Instagram is is slowly becoming a place where people sell assets. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So, you see, I was thinking something that I was going to say, mm -hmm. and I turned around. They all were thinking the same thing. Yeah. But when I say it, I'm going to be the petty guy <laughs> for being their mouthpiece. <laughs> anyway, go on. I, I think I think Instagram has turned into uh, a, a place where people um, sell themselves in all angle. On specifically, people speak. sell themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's um, it's. It's okay. I'll, I'll put it. I'll give you. I'll give you a specific ex explanation. Okay. Example. Um, I'm not a deep person, and as much as you all see this art, I, I'm very surface level, and I don't do any pose that's like got up in the morning and saw the limelight. God is great, and life is beautiful. Um, if I do that, I'm actually showing a picture of God being great. I am not showing my shoes, talking about the sky being blue. Okay. So I don't do a dog face, talking about. One plus one. And so what I'm seeing is I get up in the morning and I see this very beautiful lady in a very beautiful, interesting yoga pose. I was waiting for this plane to land. Um, and I'm looking at a picture and beautiful yoga pose looking amazing. And I'm like, this is a beautiful lady. Mm -hmm. And then the caption says, do not look behind, only look forward. I don't see the connection between what I'm seeing. Well, and you know, um, there could be a connection. T tell me this connection, Claude. This is not from experience. I'm just kind of like spitballing here. I'm just spitballing here. But right. there could be a connection. If she's saying don't look behind, you know, so what did, what did you do? Did you look at the rest of her pictures? I mean, you see a Lamborghini, you look at the Lamborghini. It's Ex like the Lamborghini is front of you. So when you looked at the rest of her pictures, did you see what was behind? Of course, I saw what was behind. And did you understand I why she's saying not to look behind? How could you? Show, I mean, how do you not look behind? That's that's <laughs> the, and, and 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 I mean, it's it's beautiful because we humans are we would do the things you tell us not to do. Absolutely. Yes. So Absolutely. Not looking behind made us look behind, and I was like, this is right. It's like the McDonald's commercial, and you're like, you know, you shouldn't eat McDonald's. Well, no, no, let me not say that. You know, you shouldn't eat certain fast foods at certain times, but the advertising works. And you can eat Chick Fil A at any time, even on Sundays, even though they don't open on Sundays. But. <laughs> Hold so, on. <laughs> wait, 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 Sano. <laughs> Is it just me or like, do y'all also get cravings on Sunday for Chick-fil-A? I feel like I don't get, like, I don't really get cravings for Chick-fil-A on Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday. It's on Sunday. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, and, chick fil and, and they're not open on Sunday. Anyway, go ahead. And they're not open on Sunday. And it's it's interesting because I, I think I think IG has become a, it's it's beautiful to see from a marketing standpoint, but from a personal standpoint, is all the things th that's not been said that we get to engage ourselves in, and I love it. I, I feel like it's 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 as much as I, it's interesting. I'm I'm I'm, it's 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 a lovely thing to see. Now initially I used to see the skylines and and the beautiful apartments and okay. beautiful dogs, and now I'm seeing beautiful people. You That's know? good, but there's nothing wrong but with that. It's, it's, it's inspirational. I hope you you like like the picture. Oh no! Though. Oh no! Oh Why? No, oh no! Because Why? nowadays, like is is a is a. <laughs> what does that mean? 
No, before a liking was I appreciate your picture. I, I like what you post. Now a like is very is different. Oh like is like you thirsty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You send a like or you send a smiley face. We have a few ladies in the crowd. Ladies, do y'all agree to that? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I mean, who send the Y'all are the problem, not the solution. So, <laughs> so if you're sending a like, like let's say uh, uh, Kevin Hart posts a picture or Kim Kardashian posts a picture, that like is like, okay, I like this picture. Now, if your friend posts a picture and you, you it's, it, I think it depends. Every like is not the same, right? Based off the picture being displayed. You know, honestly, and I really mean this, yeah. I didn't think me asking you what you thought about Instagram would be so such, you know, a complex, it's very complex. it got really deep it right got, now. It gets deep. It I gets mean, deep. it got super deep. It gets deep. So I, I'm cool with Instagram. Okay. I'm going to just, you know, keep it surface level. I'm cool with Instagram. The, the one thing, though, that I'm not so cool about with Instagram anymore is, you know, Instagram has created this this secondary person for everybody. Yeah. And a lot of people make that secondary person the primary person. Yes. You know, you meet people, a lot of people these days, especially in, you know, my my medium, which is the nightlife, yeah. you meet a lot of people and the way they introduce themselves to you is by their IG name. Yes. You know, yes. Um, hey, what's up? I'm Big Brother G. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Your yep. mother named you Jared. Call yourself Jared. Why are you saying you big brother G? And, and you know the other thing too is like, and, and I'm going to take it the other way. Um, you would meet, let's say you want to take a number from somebody you like, a lady, right? On Instagram? No, no. She would rather give you an Instagram than give you her number. Somehow her number is more private because than all the yoga poses no, on no, 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 no. Because <laughs> what, what is really happening is that she needs to vet you. And your resume is your Instagram. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, yeah. Which is why the only thing I post on mine is petty shit. <laughs> you know? So I figure once you get on my Instagram, I'm sorry? Yeah, but, you know, I'm just saying, like, okay, I'm that's stuck. That's I, that's I, wasn't, I wasn't prepared for. Yeah, yeah. For, What's for that information coming from? It's like, this is to answer. This is too I, mean, to, you, I am proudly. Do you want to get on wait, stage with I us? I am proudly married. But I, I wasn't ready for that. Like, she like, just kind of... Wow. We'll have, that. We'll have a Q&A. And, and I feel like you have a lot to say. Shiba, do you, do you own an iPhone or an, or an Android? iPhone? Because that behavior was an Android behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying that, an, that behavior was an Android behavior. You know, Android people are different. True. Like, people who own Androids are just different type of people. Like, how can you be okay with your phone dying every 20 minutes? Like, that's not life. <laughs> that cannot be life. <laughs> no, seriously. You know, my mother had an Android phone for the longest. Yeah. And my mother is one of those, you know, hardcore, you know, the African mom that mm. she would stay with that thing until the wheels fall off. Yes. And the day we finally got my mom an iPhone, she realized how much easier her life got. Yeah. So there's a specific friend of mine in the crowd that has an Android. <laughs> this was literally a call <laughs> for you to change your life. <laughs> Please. I, 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 funny enough, I, I do have one of my staff has an Android, and he's not, never reachable. I, you know, Android people would tell you how, oh, well, you know, you can do this with Android, but do you do it? No, you, you don't. <laughs> See, I, I, I didn't want to call you out, but... <laughs> names are, names are, you're dropping the names. It's okay. You know, no, seriously, I, I, I don't get it. And, and, you know, the whole thing with Android has a direct correlation to WhatsApp. Let's go to WhatsApp. WhatsApp. My mom is on WhatsApp right now. Listen. Probably waiting for me to... All of our right? moms, aunties, all that. WhatsApp. I'm sure the, 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 the stocks for WhatsApp just went through the roof during the pandemic. Yes. Because the amount of misinformation that was going through <laughs> WhatsApp, I mean... The forwards, <laughs> the forwards, especially the forwards. <laughs> My aunties in Africa are sending me messages on WhatsApp telling me, oh, you need to do this and that. 
and you're going to be cured from corona. <laughs> Where did you get this information? Everybody knows <laughs> that. <laughs> Who is everybody? <laughs> My mom was sending me concoctions on recipes. On it. And I actually asked, have you tried this? She's like, she has not tried it, but she looks like I could be more in danger. So she's asking me to, <laughs> asking me to try it. The, am the amount of misinformation on, on, on WhatsApp. And there's no way to also even filter what is what because you just receive the messages. Oh, it just, it just comes through. And then the aunties, I mean, honestly, the aunties are keeping WhatsApp alive. Without the aunties, WhatsApp will be done now because auntie can be here in Silver Spring with you. Instead of calling you regularly, she's going to call you on WhatsApp. Yep. Why? Like, why do you do that? Well, call me regularly. Like, call me on my regular number. That's why, honestly, I tell this secret right now. I have a different WhatsApp number. Oh, I and do. And that's my Google number. I, I do, too. I have actually I have three numbers. So when you try to call it, it takes you somewhere else. Seriously, because I, I couldn't do it anymore. I was like, enough is enough. I have three numbers. Why do you have three numbers? For, for, for exact, to separate my different lives. Tell me more. I know, I know. This is petty shit. So I'm sure you think what I'm about to say is what's going to come out. But Tell me more. What, how many separate lives do you have? I three. Wanna... three. I have the Africa life. So everybody in Africa. Okay. Um, I mean, like, probably 10 WhatsApp groups. Because for every school you went to, there's a group for that. For every you know class, what? That's actually true. For every class you were in, there's a group for that. So, class of 98, primary school, class of... So, every Leslie, group... Yes. you're showing your age right now, 98? I, I was in primary school in 98. Wait a minute. Like the, 98? The, 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 the bar head says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... I, I'm about to talk about your edges, but it's okay. <laughs> let's, not, let's forget that, but it's, it's all right. But... Well, okay, so... so, so Africa has a, a separate space where All right. I engage with them, which is primarily WhatsApp. Okay. That's, that's the best way to share everything. Um, and then I have uh, my friends, friends circle in the US, um, personal circles, people that I need to talk to. Okay. And then there's business. And early on, I just had one number or two. And people will call you at 9 o'clock in the evening asking you if the space is available. And I'm like, do, how would you feel if you're off work and somebody calls you? And I'm like, I don't answer those calls anymore. So, but then I got annoyed sometimes. I'm like, I don't want to have the bad customer service. And so I created a number just for everything. Is that a Google number? It's an actual phone. Oh, you borrowing like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I give the phone to Ken. Oh. So Ken has the phone so that he can answer those calls. Um, We're finding out more and more about you through this yeah. thing right here. And then my personal number, unfortunately, has seeped into now the business number. So you have a few people that still call about business. And the, the thing about it is, like, I think initially, and this is to everybody, it's like you want to okay. be reachable. If you have something you're starting, you want to be reachable because that's how you do business. But I, I, I very quickly learned that that business started seeping into personal life. So I'm home. Uh, with Boo, and we're chilling, and someone calls you, and... You say you're home with who? You're home with Boo. It's an example. Okay. Example. Example. You know, listen, because people are going to see this, so I just want to clarify yes. things, so yes. there's no if, but, or maybe about it. It's, wait, let's be petty. It is an example. So, we're, okay. we're home, and you're... With you're, Boo, yeah. as an example. As an example, okay. and you get a call, and it's a business call, and you look at that call, and you realize, like, oh, shit, I have a bill to pay tomorrow, and you're like, damn, let me pick up this call, it could be money. And it's cool in the beginning because you're, you're, you're seeing yourself locking in clients at 9, 10 in the evening. And then you start realizing that it starts taking away from your quality of life. And it starts mm, affecting yeah. why you're doing business. Business is right. made so that you're home at 7, 8 to enjoy life. Chilling, right. And you should be able to. And if you're doing that at 9, 10, then there's a problem, right? Um, now, this is not to say that careers that don't work at 10. There are careers that work at 10, but as a business owner, right. your goal is not to work to then not have time to enjoy quality of life. You should make a post saying exactly that and yeah. post it on Instagram. People because all the entrepreneurs on Instagram would tell you that if you are not working 24 hours, you're not going to make it. So, okay, now that comes to the next thing. There, there are levels to it. Okay. Remember, the weird, this is 2022, so this is like seven years into IO Spaces. Ah, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Seven thank you. years, wow. Um, so I couldn't afford to do this in the, first, in the first five years. 
Okay. Get, you, you don't be bougie in the first five years of operation. At gotcha, least in the first three gotcha. years of operation. You do what you have to do. You, you sacrifice. And that's why having a good support system helps. Because in those first three years, your support system will understand that you're doing those things because you're trying to get somewhere. It's, like, it's like having a girlfriend or a partner in medical school. The, like, her availability or his availability would be not be the same as when you graduate. So You, got, you just got to be you know, ready and to look for the finish yeah, line. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, but... If things, if you're doing the right things, then you're learning about processes and systems. And right. You're learning about the fact that in five years' time, if you're having a child at 10 p.m., it's not time to. It's like I was imagining myself as a kid. Let me imagine at 10, my mom is home getting a phone call. I'll be like, Ma, what are, what are you doing? You should be with me telling me bedtime stories. That's how I think, and I realized I started doing things that avoid me from being at work situations at, at those times. It's not perfect yet, but. But you're getting there. We're getting there. over fifty percent, though, right? Yes, over fifty percent, yes. That's good enough in twenty twenty two. Now I can wear black. I can wear shades like this at night, and I still see. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. No comment. No. So, um, I want to pivot into something else, right? Okay. Leslie, you're part of you know the African diaspora here okay. in in yes. the DMV. Mm -hmm. That is, you know, a very a growing diaspora. Yes. And maybe, I don't know, but, but I feel like it's led by West Africans. Is, do, do, you, do you think so? It's, it's, it's led by Nigerians. Oh, I, I was trying to do layers, but okay, sure. Let's, I, let's go straight to the point. It's, it's, it's primarily, it's, it has been primarily led by Nigerian culture. Okay. <laughs> If, there you go. That's it. If, that's it right there. Yeah. No, so the reason why, you know, I, I, I bring this up is because my West Africans friends are going to hate me for this. But I really dislike West Africans. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to say why. West Africans sometimes can be so, like, I don't want to say close-minded. but Obnoxious. They, Okay, that, that's too can be a little harsh, but no, no. they they don't want to be open God. sometimes you to call, other you, things. You call a hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, hold on, I'm to gonna call it. I'm gonna call it space for yeah, space. I'm ready know? for this. I'm a DJ, right? And we often in this area do these quote unquote African parties. Yes. And the music that is predominantly played yeah. is not even West is Nigerian music. You know, and me personally, I, I'm not okay with that because I'm always like, yo, Africa is too big for us to, like, I know I said I wasn't going to get serious, but, you know, for a second, but Africa is too big for us to minimize ourselves to that, you know. And I think to a certain extent, when, when we say those things, people look at it as, it feels like, oh, if you're not with the group, yeah. you're against the group. Yes. that's No, it, it doesn't have to be like that. Because, like, if you search on Google right now, I want you to pull out your phone. Seriously, search on Google right now. Top five places for tourism in Africa. At least the top three are going to be in East Africa. I'm more, I'm more than certain. At least the top three are going to be in East Africa. You know? So that alone, anyone who doesn't really know Africa, right? Before this whole thing of um, the year of return and Ghana became a thing, mm -hmm. that was the search. Anyone looking to go to Africa, that was the search they were doing on Google. Yeah. And most people were seeing that, hey, Tanzania has these beautiful places, Kenya, yes. you know, Ethiopia, yes. you know, who? Tanzania. Tanzania. Tanza Tanzania. Tanzania. Morocco. All right. I'm going to have someone from Tanzania in here next time so that they can tell you that it's actually Tanzania, not Tanzania, you freaking Americans. <laughs> 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 anyway. <laughs> But no, these places have like some of the most beautiful, you know, things to see in Africa. Not to say that the West doesn't, 
You know, the West does have a lot to offer. Yeah. But, you know, it, and to me, it just breaks my heart that, you know, to, to a certain extent, we've minimized Africa to just being Afrobeats. And to a certain extent, you know, I'm not I'm not hating on Nigeria. I love Nigeria. So don't I, get me wrong. So I love him. So the thing is, like, we, we're going to take a lot of hit for this. Uh, uh, one person tried to have Now we, you are. They're not gonna come and talk to me. No, and, and and the thing about it is like I I hold my weight, and I'm gonna say this. One person tried to do this. Um, his name is Shatawale. He um he went and said some very. I mean, he went the extreme route, and the whole country of Nigeria came for him, and everybody else saw exactly what he was saying. It's about the delivery. His yes. delivery was terrible. His delivery was terrible, but we all saw exactly what he was saying, um, and I saw what he was saying, and it it hurt me a little bit because. I'm just going to say this. There was there's an event that ha happens yearly in the U.S. Uh, called One Africa Fest. And okay, okay, okay. And when you when you hear One Africa Fest, in your mind you're thinking you're going to discover African culture. The best that whole. Africa has to offer. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. And even more so, the goal is even to find black culture. Because one thing I have noticed, and this is something, it's a, it's a debate for another day, is there has to be a way to merge African. American black culture and African culture. There has to be, and festivals are meant to do that. They're meant for you to experience how we are similar. Um, so with, with One Africa Fest, I, it was in New York, and I was like, I didn't even check the lineup. I just saw the name, and I was like, I want to go there. This is an opportunity for me to- Which engage. one was that, the very first one? Or? No, no, not the first one. The One the, a little later yeah, on. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, and I was like, let me go check this out because at the time, remember, we we're planning the meeting. Oh, no, 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 we're not excited planning anything. We're, I just wanted to go check it out. And I get there and I, I watch the acts back to back. And I'm like, I, I, I did the face where your, your head goes to the left. And I'm like, there's something off about this. About what, the acts or the, the show? The, the music. Okay. All the music was primarily Nigerian music. And it's, it's called One Africa Fest. Leslie, you sound like you're a hater, man. You're hating on them right now. I, I was, exp again, it, it, it should have been called One West Africa Fest or One Nigeria Fest. The thing about it is this. I went there, I saw it, and I did not hate. Actually, I, was, I had a little like, sense of pride because I was like, your Nigerians know how to package. The, the, one of the beautiful words they use is packaging. They figured out packaging to a perfection where they know how to elevate themselves in all circles to go to. And my, 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 my sense of pride was like, I wish other African countries could understand this because if we all did the same, then we would not be in this space. But then comes the next thing. When you're in a position of leadership, it is your role to find a way to bring others with you, right? It's something you have to do. So I get back to DC, and I'm like, I said something online about this, and some folks came at me, same thing. And I said, no, well, rather than even complain about this, let's do something about it. And we created something called the Made in Africa Experience. Um, let's even step back. IO Spaces, the company, was created because when I came to DC, the spaces I went to, were primarily non-black. Okay. And I couldn't see The shared myself. spaces. Yeah. Okay. So IO Spaces was created as a space for everyone, not just Africans, but everyone to feel welcome. So hence why when you walk in here, it feels like even though you know it's African inspired, there's something about a space that makes you feel welcome. It's, it's intentional design. So what is happening in, in the music space is, is intentional. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. And I know exactly the powers that be understand the economic behind it. And I'm like, while I have the means to change it, I will change it. And so we made it, we, we did the made, made in Africa experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a conference and we had, we had speakers from all African, African countries. Um, and then specifically I said, I'm going to do my best to only invest into spaces or experiences that are, don't have the ability to have the platform that other spaces have. Because I do believe that the Afrobeat scene is good. They're good. I don't think we, they need any more support. They're good at the very highest level. If Brenda Boy is doing the Madison Square Garden, uh, that's how I, I feel. I, I think, so the, the problem is this. Where we live, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really understand that this is literally 
a little box. Yes. Where I don't even know if I can say we're 2% of, you know, the, the African community in America alone. So in a lot of ways, we're here and we believe what you just said. A lot of people believe that. Let me tell you. You know the first African genre that was featured at Coachella? House. House music. South African DJs. Right, but guess what? We never heard about an African at Coachella until a Nigerian artist got there. You know? And again, that's because of this little bubble that we live in where people believe that, oh, what we're seeing, that's, that's it. There's that's nothing a, extra. That's, a, that's the start of it. Right, there's yeah. nothing extra to it. So I beg to, to, you know, to differ with you that Afrobeat is actually not as big as people think it is. So, Trust me. So, but, and, and, and that's where we come into what I call perception versus reality. Mm -hmm. The perception is Afrobeat looks like it's big and from an economic standpoint is helping that perception by Is it really? Okay. Again, Do you think so? Let's look at the last, uh, again, let's look in a bubble. Let's, before we jump out of a bubble, let's look at the right. bubble. Right. The three biggest concerts in the last, say, three, four months in the DMV. Okay. Sold out concerts have been primarily Afrobeat centered experiences. As a whole, in the DMV as a whole, or just like the international community? Just, 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 just our bubble. Just our bubble. Oh, the African. Yeah, that, the, I want to focus on our bubble. We're going to go, we're going to get out of okay. that. Okay. Because um, I was about to say, yes. you know, Bad Bunny was at <laughs> Echo Stage and killed it. Yes. But what that bubble is not understanding is that there's more to it. And it's also, it's, we have to, I think, and what I think I'm trying to do is burst that bubble to have them. I, okay, let's, let's go to a specific year. 2019, there was a concert we produced called the Coming to America Music Festival. Don't go too far. Don't go too far. But go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to let you go. Go <laughs> ahead. Go ahead. Don't and go. it had four of the biggest French African acts in the world. About. Naza, Kid Black, Deja Dream, um... Let's remove games and that you, but it had four of probably three of the biggest acts in that space. And one of the top or two of the top local promoters told the organizer, We don't see your concert working. Okay. And before it to work, we need you to bring this one specific Afro one. Specific Who was the artist that you brought? Mm hmm. Uh, uh, Davido. Okay. That they, that they needed Davido to make. This, uh, this show successful. And you, and you and I know that that was not true. Okay. And I, I see that as in, it's, a, it's that bubble that believes that anything that's non-West African and non-Nigerian, we don't have a crowd to go there. But I, we, I have seen shows out of that space, especially in the house space. The, um, Black Coffee comes to D.C. a lot. Right. Sells out shows. He comes to D.C. more than these... Yes. Afrobeat artists do. So they, 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 there's not an obligation to merge genders when it comes to concerts. There's spaces for to do each. Each of them respect the individual spaces. So we've talked a lot about problems. Yes. Right? Solutions. I think one of the issues is that people don't travel enough. True. You know, and traveling for people here looks, what does it look like? On the Miami. Boat. On the boats. On Atlanta. You know. But Houston. Did you see during COVID the, the, the amount of black people on boats? No, I mean in DC though. That's the travel. Yeah, but boats. yeah, because they, you know, the aunties sent that message saying that if you're on the water, there's no COVID out there. <laughs> That's why they were comfortable on the boat. Yes. No, but y'all laughing. I'm serious. Like there was the one message that said if you're in the open air, there's no COVID. Yeah. That if you're, you know, indoors, then you're going, yeah. That's the aunties. Once the aunties called it, the boat industry went up, so, sold out. So you talk about like the solutions. People don't travel. Traveling, yeah, people don't travel enough. Mm -hmm. People do not travel enough. And even okay, so taking one step back, right? One of the main thing with this whole culture, it, it starts because obviously the food is going to be the food. Yeah, you know the clothes are going to be the clothes. You know. Um, I recently seen, I think it was Gucci, who sold. There's this. Makanja. <laughs> the Makanja. 
from Cameroon. Our mat. That's right. That costs so there are these $5. plastic um, sandals. Close toes, but they're like all plastics. Yeah. They sell that at the market for like 200 francs or something like that, yes. which is not even a dollar. Yes. Gucci is selling those things right now for over, I think, seven to nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, as I said, fashion is going to be fashion. But what is really going to drive things is going is the music, which is why it always seems to be that the music is forefront. And who drives the music? Music promoters. And the problem is a lot of them don't travel. You know, a lot of them don't travel. No, I'm I'm being serious. I'm not even I'm not even trying to be funny or anything. A lot of even DJs, a lot of DJs don't travel. People always say, sorry, I know you were about to say something. Oh no, I'm agree. People with always you. wonder why, you know, every three months or so, at least, a bare minimum, I try to travel. It's not only because I'm like, oh, well, I saw the fact that I feel like I've been working hard and I need a vacation. Yes. True. And that you're the top top African top DJ tier, top in tier, top tier. Top, top tier. By, top tier. Well, let's not forget that you were actually the top uh, winning awarding entertainer in 2021. Shiba, Claude was the, uh, the, award, the, the top winning awarding for Air Africa top in tier. the entertainment industry. You're the, you're the first. Top tier. First. Top tier. Let's, let's, let's not forget that. Top tier. But. <laughs> yes, Trailblazer. No, but I travel a lot, you know, because, and every time I travel, I try to go out and I try to experience different things. I would never forget this. This is a true story. By the way, everything I write on my Instagram, people think that I, like, create these things. No, these things actually happen. I promise you. So this is a true story. In 2000, and, I want to say 18. When, wait, we went in lockdown 2020, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, 2019, uh, 2018. I went to St. Thomas. St. Thomas, in 2000, this was June 2018, and they were just recovering. They had this huge hurricane. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a huge hurricane that hit in 2018. So St. Thomas was on the path, and they were hit really badly, right? So we go there in June. And we go out. They only had one nightclub open. One in the whole island. Just one. And that was the only nightclub that had a generator. How do we know this? Because when um, we were watching the NBA finals, this was in June. We are watching the NBA finals at, um, what's his name? Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's. He has um, a, a sports bar there. Okay. So we're watching the NBA final there. And right when the game finished, the power goes out. For a second, I thought I was in Africa again. <laughs> you know, because I don't know about the other countries, but in Cameroon, to have, like, for them to keep the electricity on, yeah. it's a luxury. Like, I don't know how, you know, that, that goes happening. What are we doing? Where are y'all... Y'all know I can't multitask when it's a lot happening right now. We, we're, we're trying to. It looks like it's getting hot in here, so okay. we need to turn down the AC a little down. And you're going to do it from your phone? Look. Technology. 2020, 2020. Wow. Welcome to IO Spaces. Wow. She said it's cold, actually. Oh, it's a tequila. It is the tequila. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, so you're the only one hot. Yeah, no, it's, it's, good, it's good. Okay, anyway. So <laughs> after that, the only place... On the island, the public place that had power was that one club. So we go there, promise y'all, the whole night they played Hispanic music, reggaeton, bachata, all of that. The whole night, wow. the one American song they played, this true story, they played Akon Lonely. That was the weirdest shit I've ever witnessed in my life. But anyway... All that to say, we went there and I got to experience something different, you know, because if I'm here, I'm always working. When will I ever find the time to go and listen to Spanish music and know that, oh, man, people are actually rocking to this specific song? So that's St. Thomas. The following year, we go to Jamaica. 
same thing. We go to this one, like, not, we didn't go to, like, the resort part. We went to, like, the street parties. Mm -hmm. And they're playing authentic dance hall. And again, that gave me the opportunity to know what is happening in Jamaica musically. 2017, actually from 2015 or 16, all the way through 19, I was fortunate and you know, hopefully when things reopen all together, I'll be able to go back and do that. I was fortunate to be part of a carnival, the Antigua Carnival. So, and we have a band over there. So, again, that gives me the opportunity to know, because they are heavy on soca music. So, that gives me the opportunity to know what's happening with that type of music. And like I said, if you don't travel as a DJ, as a promoter, first of all, as a promoter traveling, you see so many different things, and it helps you with being creative when you go back home. A lot of promoters do the same thing because if you wake up every day yeah. and all you see is Negril, Society, Aya Space, and Cowdy's right from your window. I, I don't know why you put Aya Space in there, but it's okay. You are in downtown Silver Spring. Yeah, but <laughs> okay. Uh, what? Leslie. It's okay. Don't feel bad. It's okay. You're part of... You came for us. It's okay. you're, you're part of, you're part of <laughs> downtown Silver Spring. I, have you seen those cartoons where, like, when you talk shit about the king, he has a button, he presses, and then the square box just opens, and it just, like... <laughs> we have you on camera. <laughs> so if anything happens to me tonight, the police know where to stop. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> but 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 you're right. If 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 all you see is the same thing, same thing, yeah, no, nothing will ever change, you know. And this leads me to the next topic. Yeah, I love this new generation of Africans, especially because this specific generation, yes, they travel a lot. They do. I mean, they will travel in a hobby. They are the ones that made Tulum popular. Yeah, because nobody knew of Tulum before. Yeah. And once the pandemic hit, if your location on IG was not Tulum, yep. yeah, you do not travel. put your location. You didn't travel. We don't want to know where you are. Oh, my God. As if you're not underneath that um, mask by that guy. There's a, there's I've never been to Tulum, so I don't know. Oh, wow. I'm too bougie. I go to Cabo. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, Tulum and the travel during COVID. And that's why I think COVID was bo both a blessing in this guy. Oh, it was a blessing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the, the amount of, I think people had to understand that there are a lot of things you have to discover. But also, the other negative part of it is that's when I discovered that a lot of entertainers, specifically DJs, did not have the weight I thought they had. Because there was a huge growth in IG lives. The IG DJ lives. Everybody was on IG live. Some people were dope, and some others were like, "Oh wow, this is what you play all the time." I, it's 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 there's nothing interesting about the music you're playing. That was the only time I wish we had the power system like in Africa, as in the power can go out at any time. <laughs> because some of the things we were experiencing, I was like, "What what is happening?" But also, I think it, it, the beautiful thing about it is. There's nothing scarier than receiving public scrutiny about you. Because in in when you're, I think when you're in, in the club, okay, people are like a little tipsy or not drinking. a little. They're very any very music any music being played would people even your bad DJ. There's enough to like keep you safe. When you're entertaining where people are not seeing you, they're listening. It's more of a visual experience or an audio experience, and they have to yep. watch you or listen to you. And and the ability to interest, and that's why you're one of the greatest at what you do. Be Ali Bumaye. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't I, I don't just throw you flowers, but I looked forward to you had something on Tuesday. Leslie, this is not supposed to be like about the way, the way this conversation it, is going. It's, it's okay. is as if I'm retiring no. and you're giving my retirement speech. No, I don't like no, this. No, but, but the beautiful thing about it is like I don't even think we're reached our peak yet. I think we are at a point where we are understanding exactly where the, the value assignment. lies. Oh, okay, sorry. We okay. see where the value lies, we see where the assignment is. And for me specifically, 
I'm trying to do what Gucci is doing to us. Hmm. I want to do it before they even do it to us. So, case in point, I'm a piano. You want you want to jump into that or you want? Oh my you want, god! You want to keep that a little bit to the Leslie back. and I'm a piano. <laughs> but on short note, is I I am seeing a lot of the forefront African innovators in the space jumping ahead of the curve and doing what other. What do you mean? In terms of a map piano? No, no, no. Or no, just, no, just in general? In general, in general. Oh, I was going to say. The African creative okay. community. Is those who are forward thinking are doing things differently before somebody else comes and do, does it for them. As much as I want to say anything negative about Gucci, someone could have done that. Like, if you think about it, they didn't make those sandals popular. We made it popular by reacting to the fact that this thing cost $200. I'm thinking to myself, How much were they, Maureen? How much was it? When you looked it up, the sandals, seven? seven. My birthday's coming up, so. <laughs> I, Just you, putting that Weren't you in Cameroon trying to look for them and you couldn't see I them? I sure was. Yo, I went to every major market in Cameroon looking for them. I could not find it. Because you wanted to come home and see you have, you have Not even. <laughs> I was trying to come with a whole bag so I can sell them. That's, you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I want to talk about something, too, about the whole travel. If Let me leave this next See, y- actually, because I wasn't even done with the traveling. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go. Say what you're going to say. Let me hear this. This traveling back forth. Okay. This December, um, and this is just specifically to, I think, the West African community, we, a lot of us traveled back home. Again, I think it's the bubble. You no, know. no, DC. I mean, right, right. What I'm w- saying is w- that w- there are a lot of people that traveled in general, but because of the bubble that we're in, we think that it was a lot more West Africans that went home. No, okay. Specifically, the new generation Africans, the one you mentioned, okay. the ones who travel a lot. I saw more travel in the last year than I've seen in the last. Do you think they travel more this year than the previous? Year? When was the the return? The it started 20, 2019? 2019. 2019. That's COVID. That's right. That's the year. The next year was COVID. Oh, yeah. It's because of them that COVID. Because yeah. they went there, had all that fun. And, and then the brother was God was like, yeah. now nah, you got to sit your ass home. The brother's COVID. So, but a, l- a lot more people decided to explore places that they had no business exploring. And that brought, like, for example, I know, um, I'm not sure about the exact numbers, but it was either between one and five billion dollars in tourism money to Ghana. Um, How do you have these numbers, Leslie? I, I, who, I read. Who's I, inside trading with you? <laughs> What's no, going on? I, th- I think also, and, and the reason is because I am looking to figure out how we do some of the things we do in the U.S. outside of the U.S. Got right? you. Because how? Some, you want to know how? Tell me. You got to know a politician. That's all. Oh, it's the truth. Yeah, if you know a politician, you're straight. Yeah. It's not the same thing here. But here you got to go through, you know, but my business the partner permits got, and all of that, you my, know. My business partner got locked up doing politicians. Oh, let's not get into that, but that's another view. Cameroon, bro. You know we're both Cameroonian. A lot of people don't even know that. I'm only Cameroonian on Tuesday, for real. <laughs> <laughs> people don't think I'm Cameroonian. People give me Kenyan. They give me East African. They give me Ethiopian. They and give you, yeah, really? Yeah. Nah, and if I don't open up my mouth, to hear my accent, they say African American. Once I open up my mouth, it like, or oh, you are like, because, th- but I'm like proud, a proud Cameroonian until they locked up my business partner, and I was like, wow, I this is a way for me to not be, but it, but it is what it is. When I met you, I thought you were from down south. No, I think you're from Oh, oh no no no, like America down south, <laughs> not so. <laughs> You see, <laughs> I, I've gotten, I've gotten all I, of that. But I thought you were from like Atlanta or something. Look, look, I, 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 I had dreads at the time. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, can, I, can I talk about your edges? <laughs> but no, you I. You know what? <laughs> we're actually gonna put a picture up <laughs> when we're gonna release this episode. We're gonna do that. Yeah, we're I, gonna I, do that. I used to have uh, locks. So, um, I, I was just told that we have about ten more minutes. To and I didn't even talk about half of the things I wanted to talk about because, Leslie, you wanted to talk about business and making Africa better okay. and all these things. Okay. I was not here for that. Let's get, let's get petty for the next 10 minutes. I'm ready for it. What do you want to talk about? Nah, my pettiness is gone already. Jesus Christ. Is that what I think it was? Yeah. Okay. Pettiness. We talked pettiness. Something. Okay. 10 minutes. Go ahead. Okay. I think I'm not drunk. I did see that, all right? 
Okay, good. Not good, but yeah, I'm not drunk. Anyway, no, so when I was talking about the traveling, right, the next, you know, group of people that I absolutely want to talk about are the travel nurses. Because I don't think anyone has won the year, and the year just started, <laughs> more than travel nurses. What about the scrum masters? Nah, they don't got nothing on travel nurses. Have you seen travel nurses go for a birthday dinner? <laughs> Man, bro, let me tell you. Yeah. These ladies would run up a bill, and you would think that they are having dinner at the Versace mansion in Miami. I mean... I don't understand. How can you go for a birthday dinner on Fridays and the bill is $750? What did y'all order? But guess what? Travel nurses don't care because they made that money. I mean, the money that they made. So travel nurses made rid- about. No, 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 no. What you're seeing right now, yeah. that's false information. No, that's, this is low end. That's fake news. No, this is low end. Bro, On do you understand end. that travel nurses were making like five thousand dollars a week, That's what, and some or some of them still are. So on the low end, they make ninety two thousand dollars a year. Low end. This is before they could travel. Like we're not talking about COVID, because COVID made a lot of nurses extremely well. But I'm yeah, I'm which talking I, I, about I, I that. Loved, I loved it. But travel nurses are a whole different. You loved it. That travel nurses are spending the money. Yeah. I would, Why? Because scammers were the ones doing it before. Scammers. DMV is, is hugely popular for scammers that spend five bottles of aces at This podcast night. does not condone or align with any ideology yeah, uh, mentioned by IO Spaces. We, 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 don't, we don't condone scammers. <laughs> I, I, I love the fact that travel nurses, because on the other end, I, I, was, I, was, um, I know someone who was in the medical field, and I, I saw... Hand, close-handedly, what, what they, they had, had to go, go through. through. Yeah, yeah, And so yeah, yeah. their celebration was like, you deserve it. It's so times 10. I mean, they took celebration to a whole new level. I asked myself, if I was a nurse and I was asked to work on the COVID floor, God knows this, I would quit. I would quit and I would go home. Some of them hey, didn't. You're making $7,000 a year, you I would quit? quit. I am not like... I'm, Man, I'm not, I'm not I could quit. design and paint. I could paint on the water. You want, on the you want me? You want me? What horse? do you want me to do? Mop the floors? I'm gonna do that. Look, seven thousand dollars a week? You are tripping, my brother. I no. after that seven k, <laughs> I bet you you gonna find me at park brunching like crazy, <laughs> <laughs> and nobody gonna brunch better than me. Shoot. But, but, you know, I think closely to the travel nurses, which I've, I've seen a lot, is there's a group of scrum masters. You think, I, I know they're not there yet. They, they, they don't come up. The scrum masters, the project managers, yeah. they don't come up. But right now, honestly, and there's a group of people that, are, you know, people don't really talk about. The folks in the army, yo. The folks in the army, outside of the fact that, okay, yeah, shout out to them for the great job they're doing. Some of them, when they are asked to go overseas, I don't think people, I don't think the taxpayers, because I pay my taxes, <laughs> I don't think the taxpayers understand how much money these folks make. Do you know that they have, I think it's a weekly or a monthly stipend, right? Mm-hmm. Then they have their regular salary. Mm-hmm. And then... Whatever, you know, apartment, home, whatever rent or lease or whatever they leave behind, Mm -hmm. the army is paying for that as well. And I know some people who just be having fun with that. So they make money as well. And that that is some very quiet money that nobody talks about. So in my list of people that if you go out this summer, you go to a brunch, and you see a lot of people ordering a lot of, not a lot, it might be like four of them, but it's a lot of food coming, and they seem to not care about the bill. They're either in the army, travel nurses, or maybe scrum masters. You, you don't want to call the fourth one? The fourth one? Yeah. I, I Okay, let's not call it, but we know it. Scammers are going to jail right now, though. 
some of them are coming from jail. That's actually not true. That wasn't true. It wasn't true. It wasn't true? No, nah, it wasn't true. Okay. The news came out. It wasn't but I wasn't true. surprised though if you could do it because... <laughs> nah, it, yo, l listen. When I read that, I was like, this guy is built different. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he got ice running through his <laughs> veins because it's one thing to be in Africa and do whatever you want in jail, but being in a federal prison and you still... But I, I was like, nah, that... That can't be true. And, and okay. the verdict came out and is, it wasn't true. Okay, okay. It wasn't true. But I can't wait for the movie. Someone needs to make a movie about him. I think, I think, I think that someone has gotten the rights to, to that. Because that movie is going to be incredible. Yeah. I promise you, when that movie come out, y'all remember how people were for Black Panther? Yeah, yeah. We will be there. I will be there. I will be we there. I want to watch it. For it. I'll do a re review on the movie. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Carl, what, what else are we? What else? Because I want to get. Can we get even more pets here? Because we're not travel nurses. Let's get. All right, two minutes. Go ahead. What what you, what, what you got for me? <laughs> I, I did have another thing that I wanted to talk about. If you don't have anything, I have something. But go ahead first. Oh, you want me to say, go ahead first? Sure, go ahead. All right, you're my guest. Good. So some weeks ago, mm -hmm. you called out a specific promoter's name. No, I'm not doing that. Okay, cool. I'm not calling Sorry. no. Let, let, let me go on the next thing. <laughs> I was, you know, I told you I, I go down in. I got mortgage to pay. I'm not calling these people name out. All right. <laughs> um, Before you do that, I just want to settle this one thing. Okay. Cameroon does not have jollof, so stop. Ooh. Cameroon does not have jollof. Nice so, just the people who keep entering Cameroon into Jollof contest need to cut it out. We don't have that. Stop. You don't have that. Because it looks like you're from the Francophone side. Um, excuse things. me. Which Cameroon has Jollof rice? Ambazonia. You mean fried rice? <laughs> fried rice is not Jollof rice. And honestly, okay. I know we're almost done, but this is going to be a very unpopular opinion. Yes. Why is jollof rice such a thing? It's not even that great. Wow. I said unpopular opinion. Which is which is fine. Which is fine. Which is it's fine. Not, like, what is it about jollof rice? So, so are you, are you, are you saying that the because okay when I look I at mean the, it's cool, but like nothing beats fire plantains, bro. I uh, yeah. nothing. Agreed. Agreed. Nothing agreed. Dodo. beats fire I, plantain. I call it dodo. You can have fried plantains with anything, bro. Okay, I went to boarding school for seven years. And every single day, for seven years, I ate rice. And you still like rice? I am accustomed to it. It's a way of living. I, at this point, there's no coming back from it. <laughs> it's like, but that's even more of a reason why you shouldn't like no, it. No, no, I tasted all kinds of rice. And I'm still here designing stuff based off rice. So, bro, you cannot talk shit. <laughs> you can't talk shit, right? But, okay, my, my opinion is this, right? Uh, the thing about the jollof rice in general, uh -huh. like with Afrobeats, as you said, some of the biggest things of, of, of experience, there's food. Yeah, and facts. We like, there's so much amazing food in, in, in Africa. Okay. Amazing. Jollof, jollof rice, rice isn't one of them, though. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, however, jollof rice, like a lot of music genders, was what was pushed to a forefront. I am the guy who would ride a wave, you then use that opportunity to then introduce other experiences. And we have done, unfortunately, we have done Jollof festivals, other space, Jollof wars. I can tell you this, Cameroon has never won. Because How can you win something you don't have? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to make you understand. Here you are trying to argue with me. <laughs> Like, we never make no but, sense. But we try to win. We try, though. We shouldn't try. We, Leave it alone. <laughs> Seriously. We try. We're we try. good at other things. Leave the jollof to Nigeria and Ghana, even though they don't even own it. Leave so, it to them. All right. Before we close out, I, 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 I want to talk about this. You don't have to join me in this. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're not done with the food. Oh. The next thing is yeah. suya. Because no, no, we, we don't have good soya. Okay, to everyone watching this, and to those who have had soya in DMV, I don't think we have. There's not one person in DMV that I have tried or That's had. Oh, okay, that you have tried. That there's I have some tried really awesome have. soya here. Who is that? Huh? By who? Who does good soya? Listen, speak on the mic. Listen. Who does good soya? At listen, at three o'clock in the morning. 
after you're drunk, anybody saw you is good. True. Like, I hope it's good at 3 a.m. in the morning till I left it in the morning and saw it at 10 a.m. I'm like, what did I just... Nah, not every I have. The one on Tech Road is not good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not every I have. But, okay, I, I think Soya, like, I've had... Okay, there was this guy called Soya Master, right? And initially, um, I really liked the flavor. Wow, you, rem- you, know, you know Soya Master? And I think because we're from Cameroon... We've, we've, we've seen what soya is as an experience. Soya is an experience. It's something where, they, they, sorry if any vegetarians are in the room, it's okay. Um, if but you are, I'm sorry. Soya is an experience. It's such a delicious, because there are different cuts to it, right? In the DMV, I'm still waiting for our version of, um, I think um, the Japanese have it, the, the, the cooking, the meat. On Hibachi? It. Yes. I'll be I'll be really interested to go to a restaurant where we're Again, able to... Again, we're not in Africa. You know, the, you need permits and stuff like that. In, Dude, in Cameroon, is if your uncle, you know, is a politician, you're good. You can set up something out in the street. No question asked. But but I love I love soya. I wish I could just have it in the afternoon without being drunk and enjoy it. I just think that overall, you know... But shout, out, shout out to Jason Soya, though. Oh, now you want to shout out Jason Suya. <laughs> I just think overall, you know, those two things, we need to push them in the back burner. When we talk about, like, food in Africa, yeah. it shouldn't be Suya and Jalof that, like, the things that we should be pushing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, those things are cool. It's cool. It's not, like... And Suya is, was never really supposed to be, like, this thing. Growing up, I never... We never idolize suya the way it's idolized today let alone again i never had jollof rice until i came to america bro but I, and, I, and i can explain and that, that comes back to, to to what i was saying earlier on there are certain things that push experience we, we might not necessarily agree to it but one thing about why soya tends to be majorly the thing is soya is a very west african thing like with jollof rice very west african some of those things are just pushed, not because they're good, but because there's enough of a population to push it. Now, there's a role that we can play, and, and I'm saying myself and hopefully the entire team, to now use that as an opportunity to then introduce other experiences. Because I think that we, can, we shouldn't serve as gatekeepers. I, I, I'm right with you. Soya and, and, um, and Jalof, right. Jalof should not be the gatekeepers to what is African food at all. That, should be, that could be an entry point. But it should lead you to other things. I want to talk about something. I know we don't have enough time. Um, I, I said it online, but I, I really want to talk about... We don't have to go into the specifics of his name, but I want to talk about concerts in the DMV. But what about the concerts in the DMV? Why, haven't, why don't we have in the... Not, and this is in the francophone... Why are you touching your edges? Because <laughs> I feel like the route you're about to take, you're about to sweat my edges <laughs> now, bro. Like, All right. <sighs> I have three questions. Mm-hmm. One, why do promoters not respect their contracts with other DJs in terms of paying DJs on time? Um, why do they not do their due diligence in regards to, if they say something, like we're doing a podcast tonight at IO Spaces, if whether there's one, two, or three people who are doing it, why would you say I'm doing a concert at Karma and next thing you know you are at Elevate? Um, and then three, why are our promoters and the event organizers not giving this artist the right experience when it comes to concerts? Because I look at, and this is just... I a, might a, need more tequila for this. This is a, a primarily West African and Eastern African issue. I saw there was this artist that came two years ago um, uh, from Tanzania. Ken, what's his name? Diamond Platinum? No, no, not. We're going to get to him. Harmonize? Um, R- Ravani. Oh, Ravani. Ravani, Ravani. Is, Ravani is 60,000 people venue in, in back home. And he came here, and I was, he went to power, and I could count the amount of East Africans in the room. Um, one. Two, I'm still too, and this is not... You've too, asked a lot of questions. Do you need me to answer anything? Start, start, go ahead. Because I, I, I have a lot. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So where do you want me to start? Who are the people that owe you money from concerts? You don't need to say names, but are they, are they people that do not respect their contractual obligations towards you? Is it a trend? Or is it just a one-offset thing? 
Again, that was like five questions, yo. <laughs> what is going on? All right, all right. Let's let's start with that one then. Do people owe me money? Yeah, of course people owe me money. Who are they? I don't even know now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not being po political, by the way. I really don't even know at this point. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I started this new year with a specific energy. And that energy was I'm going to wake up every day and be me unapologetically. And that's what you see on my social media, one. And two, I also said I'm not going to allow, I'm no longer, because I used to, I'm no longer going to allow what someone else is doing b to bring my energy down. Okay. Which means, and that includes talking about them, mentioning them, because there was an interview that, that came out um, very earlier this year. And unfortunately, the way it came out, it, it led with this one specific part of the interview that I did. Yeah. And that part was really just like maybe 1% of the entire interview. Yes. But they led with that specific part. Do, and that Do you want to get it? Do you want to address that now? No, I don't need check? to address it. So it was... Yeah. I'd, it is what it is. Right. Basically. So that, okay. all in all is to say that even reminded me of, you know, when I was coming back from Africa, because yeah. I went back home in December, me coming back, I said to myself, this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm not going to do. So, no, I'm not being political. I actually do mean it. I don't even know who owes me money at this point. Okay. But it really doesn't even matter because, thankfully, I've been blessed to make whatever that money is or was times 10 by now. Okay. So I can't allow whatever that was to hold me back because the minute I keep giving it energy, I'm unable to move forward. And for me to move forward or for me to be productive and grow bigger, I need to move forward. I don't know. You asked me five questions. Can Which one did I answer? You answered the one about being owed money. Okay. I, so I, what was the other question? Let, let me just say something quickly to what you just said. Got you. What you said is the right thing to do. But? But I remember I didn't pay my Verizon bill. It was $40. This guy sent me to collections. And, and what I learned about that is a contract is a contract. The DMV, and especially in our bubble, we have, uh, we have come to a point where we have accepted mediocrity as, and one thing about you that you have taught me is two things. I'm going to say this. Being on time and a contract is a contract. I do believe there has to be consequences because I have made my own mistakes. I do believe we have to get to a point where if someone comes to D.C. and if you're watching this video and you're planning a concert in D.C., if you come to D.C., the people you don't fuck with and come and waste our time, tax towns, I.O. spaces, do not come to us and do things knowing that you wouldn't complete your contractual obligations, knowing that we're going to do the right thing because to call you out or to sue you is somehow morally wrong. And then I go no, back- I don't and I think that's my, wrong. Yeah, and I go back and I look at my balance sheet or my bottom line, and I see a lot of red possible <laughs> backs of people I can sue. But I know if I sue it because we're in this bubble, Leslie will be looked upon as the wrong person. But we're talking about $60,000 a year. $20,000 in missed, missed um, opportunity there. $10,000 because they didn't pay us our fee. Another $40,000 because they didn't respect their word. So what did you learn from that, though? Do not fuck with me any longer. One. Two, if you do do that, I'm going to come for you. Not me, Leslie. That, that's the beautiful thing about having lawyers is that I want to get to a point where, because now that I have a team, uh -huh. and I, I, it's different. It's like having kids. I know it sounds, I don't have kids yet, but. Yeah, because I, I, I was about to say. <laughs> I don't know if it's really like having no, I, kids. I, right? treat, I treat my team. Like your kids? No, like I, I, I care about. Sheba is mom. like, wait a no, minute. No, no, not like you. I'm your mom. I, the, all the, the money that comes to us, like five years ago, it was just me and my business partner. It was gotcha. just two of us. Right. I played all the roles. Now there are about 15 of us. And that money pays bills. And I have noticed correlations between all those times those payments were late 
I paid people late. And a lot of times, the times where I had to staff had to leave was always around being paid late. And I'm like, why are we being paid late? These people owe us money. And I learned from that that I'm going to be more on an aggressive end. If you are planning in your mind somewhere to come at us and use our time, we are going to come for you. You might say what you want to say, and that doesn't, that doesn't apply to me. If I hear that somebody did the same thing to you, I'm going to go for them with or without your permission. That's all I had to say. For the record, <laughs> I ain't saying Leslie <laughs> to any. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes. I think, you know, I, I get it. I get it, you know, but I learned... Uh, I learned a lot of things from my father, mm -hmm. but, you know, two things that have always stuck with me yeah. outside of, you know, being on time, which, as you guys see, we're a little late now, but um, thanks, Leslie. Anyway, be consistent and you, you ready for, for this one? What's, what's this one? Make sure that no matter what, you understand that there are more solutions than problems. Yeah. So with that being said, yeah. I always look at a lot of these situations and I say to myself, all right, one of the solutions could be to take the route that Leslie wants to take. Which is? The route you just said. Okay. You know? Yeah. And another solution could be that I say to myself, all right, I'm not going to look at this as a situation that was a total L. Mm -hmm. because out of everything that happens to me, I try to draw a lesson out of it. Yeah. You know, and to me, again, because I'm at a point in my life where my peace is priceless. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing should jeopardize my peace. Yeah. I would rather walk away, and I will walk away from things which I have, and I'm learning now and I'm seeing more and more because I used to worry that, well, you know, just like the things that I talk about on IG, you know, I used to, well, what would people say when I, if I say something like that? Yeah. Or what would people think? But I had to learn that at the end of the day, I'm going to do what is best for me and what is best for my peace. Yes. And I urge you as your friend mm -hmm. to also, you know, make sure that if that is the course of action that you choose to take, mm -hmm. that you can sleep well at night. And as long as you can, oh. nothing else will matter. Oh, and, and, and that is why and, and I, I take your opinion and I accept it. And I'm going to do just that. And I'll let the lawyers do what they have to do so I can sleep at night in peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, Leslie, once again... You know, congratulations on you so much. your Thank insanity you so much. Art you so much. exhibit. Yes. Which is um still happening. Yes. Unfortunately, by the time I post this specific episode, yeah. the art exhibit will be done already. Yes. Excuse me. So the next question to you is yeah. once this episode finally comes out, okay, where or is there a, a place where people can still go to experience your, your artistic, artiste, artiste, you know, with the French, artiste, artiste. Bon, 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 il faut écouter, hein, mais <laughs> ça c'est une question très délicate. Mais, uh, on n'a même pas parlé en français, on est francophone, mais c'est pas grave. Only on Wednesday, bro. Today's <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Today is the, the, no, the, the, I said, the tequila. The hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I said I'm Cameroonian on Tuesday, which oh, is today. And I am oh. Frank. See? And y'all talking about Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Pay attention. Come on, y'all. Pay attention. Okay. Today's when today's Tuesday, and I say I'm Francophone on Wednesday. Okay. So um, tomorrow, hit me up tomorrow. So, of course, you can find all my art on my page, um, Didi Jamin. Funny enough, my name is Leslie Tita, but the DJ German is, you know how you said people created alter egos of themselves? That's you. I did just that. I fed it into the trend, because I'm like, the trend pays bills, and the trend works. So Sh Shame on you. Thank you. Thank you. I told you. I so, so when you meet people, I, so when you meet people, what what do you this what do you my, introduce this yourself my, as? This is my Instagram name. No, no, no. When you meet people, oh, I'm Leslie. I'm Leslie. I don't tell. I don't call myself DD. I don't know what. No, you no, do. no, no, no. I'm but just asking. Funny enough, funny enough, those names happen to be my names. Jamin, okay. um, 
is my name. It's it's my middle name. It's, it's normally it's normally from a region in Cameroon with people that are pretty well off. It's in the west, west, west. Um, like yeah, they have money over there. Jamin means son of. You're me. not saying yes or no. What's up? <laughs> Come on, you need to answer the question. Huh? It's from a region in Cameroon that people that are pretty well off. What the name? Yes. I, I, I my mom would say so. My mom would say so. So you wouldn't say so. I, w- I would, I would, I would say, okay, yes, yes, it is, it is, it is, yes, I would say yes, but I, I try to. Leslie, did you run tracking in school? I did, I did. Because the way your ass is running around this, <laughs> this question, be- because, where is Because you probably noticed this, and you know this, I, I try my best to be as low-key as possible, hmm. and not to uh, draw the attention that I don't need to draw, because then with that comes a lot of, like, like no, not you be, try to be so low key. Yeah, you like want to walk around wearing just, Balenciagas. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, you don't want people. <laughs> no, you, I, I, I. Oh, let, can, can I briefly say something? My most expensive purchase in my life was Balenciagas, and I remember as a kid, I buy shoes to wear them. You know, people will buy because I play, I play basketball. Okay. People will buy expensive Jordans to keep them in their closet. I, wore, I bought bas- I bought Jordans to wear them. And these Balenciagas have That been makes sense because the region of Cameroon you're from, you know, people that have money, no, those was, are the type of things they do. No, no, to wear them, to play basketball. I know. And this is this The is rest true. of us, we buy Jordans to keep them because we don't have as much to keep buying them. No, no, but, but that's the beautiful thing about shoes. Right. If you invest into the right when shoes. When they go bad, you just buy the there's next no, there's one. No, but it doesn't go bad. I've had them for a year now, and they're still going strong. No, I'm saying the one, the Jordans you used to play basketball with. No, when no, they went, no. When no, they you, went you, bad, you, you just keep bought it. another I, one. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hoarder with shoes. I so, keep it. But you bought, and because you can't play with them if they're bad. Oh, no, you, you keep wearing them. You bring them to the cobbler. You, you're in Cameroon. Don't pretend. We don't, we don't, you, this guy, it, stop. It, it burns. You bring it to the cobbler. The cobbler in Cameroon fixes Jordans. Oh, yes. Which he one? Glue. The one that's from that region because he's used to no, seeing no, a no, lot no. of expensive shoes. The one from the northern, <laughs> the northern region. But um, where you're going with this, you're not going to win. We were it. done because you're the one who wanted to talk about the name and how you come from but, a rich but, but no, no, spot. The DJ Jamin is my actual name. Okay. DJ is being son. Oh, okay. Which is um, the name they call you, like the family name. You got you. And Jamin is my middle name. Okay. And um, uh, the reason I, I did create the, 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 that page was because I wanted to have a space for just focus on just my art. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much I for allowing me to, you know, come here and just have a conversation. Thank you so much. Because that's really what my podcast is. You know, I decided that I'm going to do something. I don't want any type of structure. I want it to be all chaos. Yeah. You know, I don't want to have a specific day when I'm going to drop it. I don't want to have a specific run through of what I'm going to talk about. Yeah. I just want to come here and have a real conversation yeah. with a real person. Yes. And I'm as so, real as it gets. So hold on. Who did I talk? Who, who was I talking with? Dede Jamin or Leslie? Um, because that's both, important. Both. Both. Yeah. What point did it change? Because we're gonna need to, you know, to put the subtitle the, of your name the, when uh, it changed. The one that saw yoga poses in the beginning, the, hmm? the, 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 the IG at the beginning. Okay. That was Leslie. Okay. And the, when what was the turning point to Dede Jamin? The one that said that people book us contracts and don't pay us. Oh, I did, okay. I, did, I see that, that happened two weeks ago. I can keep going. So, which, who is from the rich part of Cameroon? Is there a rich part is in Cameroon? Is that Leslie or did it just Is there a rich part in Cameroon? Because, listen, when we post this, we're yes. going to put the map so people know exactly where Bangante, you want to say Bangante. Yeah, I know, Bangante. but people will know where it is. So, But we have to put it when that person West, is speaking. West, West, Cam- West Cameroon. Leslie. Yeah. Who, was, who is from there? Leslie or Dede Jamen? Both. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Both. All right. Congratulations, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claude. Hi, y'all. Martian Podcast, we're out. Thank you. Thank you.